All right. Good, good afternoon, every, everyone. Welcome to our series, Cash Your Life 101, Know Your Insurance Schemes in 2020. My name is Carl, and I will be your host for this afternoon. For this session, we are privileged to have Randy Ang, Financial Services Manager at Professional Investment Advisory Services Private Limited, also known as Uh, sorry about that. Um, uh, this session will be started with a presentation made by our guest speaker, followed by a Q&A session at the end. A link for your questions will be provided in the chat function, as well as the, at the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions along the way, do fill up the form, and I will raise it up to the speakers at the end of the presentation. Now, without further ado, please welcome Mr. Randy Ang. Hi everybody, good afternoon. Yeah, thank you so much, Carl, for the introduction. Um, my name is Randy, and today I'll be sharing a lot, uh, a bit more on issue life and what it is all about. All right. Um, thank you again for joining us. Like what Carl has just mentioned, um, we'll be sharing the link for the Q and A questions. So if you have any questions in mind, do feel free to sound it out. If not, we can always have a quick chat after I finish my, my presentation, all right? So with this, um, allow me to, to start. All right, the slides that I'm gonna see for today are basically the information that's released by Ministry of Health, all right, on casual life. So these slides are already from Ministry of Health. So let's look at what we're gonna be covering. All right, first and foremost, we look into long-term care. What is it all about? How can we finance it? And what is this casual life that has just been launched in October by Ministry of Health? What, what exactly is it? Is it an insurance plan or is it some kind of grant or some kind of fund, right? Um, how about any, are there any other initiative or schemes that we can all tap on? And of course, lastly, what is the, some of the more commonly asked questions as this scheme was being rolled out? Okay. Okay, before we move into long-term care, Let's look at what are the various kinds of healthcare needs that we have, or rather that we require. In general, we classify them into three broad categories. Firstly, we talk about primary care. So primary care basically refers to your clinics or your polyclinics, you know, those where you visit for your common, group, common flu, cough, or if you get yourself injured somewhere, like you sprain your knee or ankle, that's, that's why you get your initial first cut, your primary care. This, this primary care is also your very first level of healthcare that we're talking about, right? And on the government point of view, they do have subsidies for primary care, and this comes in the form of the child's cut, and of course your Medicaid, which is part of your CPF, one of the three CPF accounts. So following on moving forward, as things get more serious, we are talking about hospital care. So hospital care is whereby the case, whereby your condition is um, requires probably a more in-depth um, in assessment and maybe a surgery is required and further long-term monitoring. I mean, when we talk about long-term monitoring, we are probably looking at like at least a next day in the hospital to monitor your condition and to see what happens after that. So for this, we do have our general hospitals and of course our community hospital. And of course, uh, we also have our private hospitals. So for hospital care, one of the areas that we look into in from the costing point of view, we have government subsidies. So if you take the entire route, like say, if you don't feel well, you go to a polyclinic and from there you get a referral and you head over to the specialist in a general hospital, like say Singapore General Hospital, all your treatments will be heavily subsidized if you're Singaporean and means testing will be done and you'll be paying the minimum based on your housing and your income ceiling. Follow on, there's also the MediSafe which you can utilize. And lastly, there is a MediShield Life, which is our national insurance scheme for hospital care. And of course, our integrated shield plan. Right. So for the MediShield Life and integrated shield plan, we'll not be touching so much today. But if you do have questions on that, yeah, just feel free to sound and we can have a discussion on the end of the, 
the end of the election, right? So what we were focusing on is the third aspect of care, which is what we look into as long-term care. So under the long-term care, we are really talking about nursing home. That means um, if you are admitted into a nursing home, what is, how, how do you, what kind of care are you looking at and what is the kind of cost that you are, you are looking at? And of course, you have a day of home care needs. Under long-term care, Basically, what you have is um, yes, there are government subsidies, like you can actually apply for a monthly allowance of like $200 or $250 from Agency of Integrated Care that's managed by the ministry. And previously, um, the government actually launches a protection cover that's known as Elder Shield. But as of 1st October, Elder Shield has, has, been, has already um, stopped incumbent. That means those who already have can still retain onto it. But moving forward, they are not going to um, carry on with other shoe. But instead, we have this thing known as cashew life. So this cashew life has started on 1st October 2020. And together with cashew life, they also launched a new enhancement scheme known as Medisafe Care on 1st October. So we've been looking into this too. Of course, in addition to cashew life and Medisafe Care, in October 2019 last year, a home care giving grant has been announced, followed by an uh, elder fund, which was in end of January this year. So these are the four aspects that we will look into. But first of all, let me just focus on casual life first. So the question in my mind would be, why do we need long-term care? And what exactly is long-term care? Long-term care is basically care when severe disability is to occur. And the way we define severe disability in this context is we are looking at the six daily activities of daily living. So what are the activities of daily living? To put it very simply, we are talking about, are you able to feed yourself? Are you able to dress yourself? Would you be able to go toileting? And then you still have controls of the bowel movements. Washing, are you able to shower yourself? Moving around or walking around? Are you able to, to move around without any aid? Or do you need help, like a wheelchair or someone to um, help you and assist you as, as you walk? And lastly, transferring. Transferring is basically means that you're moving from the bed to a chair and from a chair back to the bed. So these are the six activities of daily living that we that we take into consideration when we determine whether or not a person is severely disabled. When you are unable to perform any of the three, you are you are hence classified as a severe disability individual, right? And that is where the long-term care actually kicks in. So what can cause a severe disability? There are many, many factors to that. For example, a sudden disability event, like an accident or even a high attack or stroke that will cause you to be maybe immobilized and you are probably wheelchair bound or even bedridden. And because of that, you can't feed yourself, you can't shower, wash yourself, you cannot go to toilet and all. So that, that classifies as severe disability. The other one is common, it's also due to chronic disease. Due to chronic disease. So things like heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, all these are different kinds of chronic diseases that can lead to a severe disability. Give you an example, say diabetes. Because of diabetes, there is a chance that you may lose the use of your leg. You know, I mean, your, your foot gets swollen and all because of the impute of all the decrease and stuff. At the end of the day, worst case scenario, they may have to amputate, amputate your leg. So when that happens, you are then which have bound already, right? And of course, lastly, old age. In Singapore, we have a very long lifespan actually. Well, on the average, you're looking at about 85 years old. So as we age, we get frail and, and we don't we, we are not as active as where we were before. And as such, physically we will be weaker and and thus over time we may need help on our day-to-day -day living, like um, having people to feed us, maybe needing some assistance in um, showering or even transferring, or even because of old age, I lose my control of my bowels. So these are all very common factors that could result to severe disability. Why, why, why does Singapore start, started 
looking into this aspect and in fact impose a mandatory coverage for everybody. The reasons are very simple. First and foremost, by 2030, based on statistics projection, one in four Singaporeans will be aged above 65. And earlier we saw that if you are aged above 65 or even as you age, naturally you'll be physically weaker and you'll be more frail. And thus, there is, there is such a long-term care need. And not only that, it says that in one in two healthy Singaporeans who are aged 65 will become severely disabled by the end of their lives. Um, just to share a little bit of impacts, typically mm. at age of 65, you will still be well and kicking. You will still be running in your day-to-day -day quite quite normally. The real the real age group where where severe disability can kick in is probably looking at your mid 70s to early 80s. So that's where you really start to lose, lose the strength on your legs. You have maybe very frail bones and probably you lose your control of hours. So, so it's, it's not so much from 65, but it's really into your late 70s or your 80s that the, the need for long-term care gets, gets very real. You know? yeah. so how much does it really cost? Right. All this cost is pretty, pretty much uncertain in a sense because it depends on the region and all. But typically, what we can see here is that on the average, we need about two to three thousand dollars per month, and these are mainly for costs like a nursing home care. So, if you were to admit yourself into a nursing home, this is a something like a fixed rate. It's like uh, paying for rental that you stay there and they pay, they help you, they are nurses to help you, they have professionals to, to take care of you. Or if, if you're not admitted into a nursing home, you stay at home, but during the daytime, you get, um, you get transported into a daycare center where you get exercise and you to enjoy some uh, activities with, with your peers. So all this, all this in fact, adds on to cost. And most of, most of the elderly who are at home, if you are, say, wheelchair bound, or if you are unable to help yourself by shower or feeding, you need help, right? You will, more often than not, you will typically hire a helper. You either hire a helper or you hire a stay-at-home nurse. So that, that brings in a fixed amount of costing already, right? So on average, for four years, three in ten are more than ten or equal to ten years. So what happens is here, what it means over here is that, right? If you save for 10 years, but you are disabled for four years, you may be complaining saying that you save too much money and yet you do not have enough or rather you didn't utilize enough of your savings. But if you save only for four years, but you are disabled for more than 10 years, you will realize that you have more enough savings to, to expense out when you are when you need the long term care, right? So, with that, we look into some of the insurance schemes that we can help to resolve this problem, right? So, these are the two kinds of um, insurance schemes, or rather, the plans which are which the government actually consider to determine whether is it what is which is more sustainable. So one way is to run into pre funded insurance schemes. So, this is whereby Every generation finds their own long-term care needs and they collect premiums through the years. One basis for this is that it's very sustainable as you start to pay premiums and premiums are more towards in the universal uh, level whereby those who are younger who are able to afford more, when they pay a bit more, you are actually paying upfront your premiums in future when you're older. So similarly, as you age, right, you, you won't pay as much premiums. So that's where the universal leveling of premiums come into play. This is the current approach, and which is also a, um, a more preferred approach by our government. The next one is what we call expanded government subsidies. So for current working individuals to fund the needs of the current elderly, this is known as intergenerational transfer. This is okay. We do have some of this um, in place, which is some of the existing um, care, like Medifund, and the um, care, care fund that we talked about earlier. 
but it becomes more challenging as the aging population increases because there will be lesser working individuals to fund the healthcare needs for that aging. Right. So with this, we ask ourselves a very simple question. How can we finance our long-term care? So what, we, what we do is that we look into a pooling and depending on our savings and having government assistance. So this approach is using our insurance to pool risk together. Currently, we have our elder shoe before casual life living launch, we do the elder shoe, and there are elder shoe documents, additional plans that is being provided for by um, insurance companies. And of course, you can purchase your own private disability insurance. This is making use of insurance. Again, we can, of course, make use of our savings. What kind of savings are we talking about? That means literally you put money aside as a private care savings, or you make use of your CPF retirement payout to fund your long term care needs. And of course, if all else fears, there's always the family support. Lastly, what are the government assistance that is being provided for? We have means testing for CDs, like I said earlier. Uh, government assistance scheme, and we can always tap on charity and donation. Of course, for the third segment, you really need to be financially in need before all this can kick in. If you are financially well off, the government assistance will, will, not, will not assist you in a way. I mean, this is just a fact of life, right? So, as we are running into all this, we are now at this juncture, we are actually enhancing the financing system. So, for insurance, we have upgraded. And instead of elder shoe, now we have shifted towards casual life. For personal and family savings, instead of talking about your own personal savings, we look into medicine care. And lastly, for government assistance, I think they have enhanced it by pushing out home caregiving grant and elder fund. So let's dive into casual life directly. So before we talk about casual life, let us look into what is elder shoe all about. This is just a recap. So elder shoe works in this manner. As a Singaporean or Singapore PR, so long as you hit the age of 40, you'll be auto enrolled into the elder shoe insurance scheme. Right. And you, you are automatically allocated either Aviva, Great Eastern, or NTUC income as one of your provider for elder shoe. Elder shoe work, you, your premiums will be payable for 25 years from age of 40 to age of 65. And at age of 65, you stop paying premium, but your coverage continues all the way to 99. So what does it do? Basically, it pays you a money income if you are severely disabled. As we mentioned earlier, severely disability basically means you cannot do three or six activities of daily living. And once that occurs, you can actually figure a claim. So Elder Shield actually started back in 2002. And when they first started, it only pays out 300 per month for a maximum of five years. So anything more than five years, there will be no more payment. Five years later, in 2007, they actually enhanced the plan. So it becomes 400 per month for over a period of six years. All right. So this is how the shoe. Now let us look at casual life. Firstly, coverage. There are four key areas here. Let's look into coverage. Casual life covers for anyone that is age 30 and above. So it's, a uni it's universal for future cohorts. What it means is that anyone that is born after 1980, you'll automatically be enrolled into casual life. Oh yes, before I forget, elder shoe, right? If you have elder shoe, you can actually choose to cancel elder shoe. All right, so after you are enrolled, if you really don't like it, you can, can choose to cancel it. But when it comes to casual life, you cannot terminate. It's a mandatory, it's a mandatory scheme that you have to take on, right? And for those that are born in 1979 or earlier, there are, this scheme is actually optional because previously you already offered elder, um, elder shoe, so it's optional. And there are actually a few ways where you can see how you can go about coming on board or converting from elder, elder shoe to cash shoe life. How about the benefits? What is the key difference between cash shoe life and elder, and elder shoe? For casual life, payout are lifetime. So earlier we saw elder shield, it pays only for five years or six years. But for casual life, I pay you for as long as you live. And not only that, 
I started my I will start my payout at six hundred dollars a month, but I will increase my payout every year. So long as you haven't started paying, I will increase it every year. So mm -hmm. this increasing and with this high amount of payout, what is the premium that we're looking at? This will be regularly adjusted is based on claims history. So they will be revised and they will look into the adjustment accordingly. This is a longer premium payment period. That means from age of 30 to 67. Earlier, we saw in our elder shoe, right? It's actually from 40 to 65. But over here, it's from 30 to 67, which is why we are able to give a higher payout because that's a longer premium payment period also. But not to, not to worry, premiums are fully paid by medicine. So when you are on a cash flow life, you are not expected to work on um, cash amount at all. Instead, it should, it should be, it's meant to be fully funded and fully payable using only your CPF medicine money. And how do we achieve that? It's through government premium support package. And lastly, administration for cash flow life is fully administered by Ministry of Health. So this process will be improved and simplified directly. Okay. okay, a bit of a breakdown. So moving forward, for those born in 1980, like we mentioned earlier, that means uh, currently age 40 and below, but above 30 years old, you'll be covered and there is no exception. You'll be enrolled on the 1st October 2020 or when you hit your birthday, whichever is later. For those who are currently age 41 and above, you can choose to join from 2021 if you're not severely disabled. So any point of time, uh, you can actually come on board as long as you're not this, uh, severely disabled. But for those born between 1970 to 1979, you'll be auto enrolled at the end of 2021. This is for convenience, right? So in this case, uh, there is an option to offer for you for you guys who are, who are on the elder shield and who are between the age of 1970 to 1979. You can still choose to opt out by 2023. But if you miss this opting out of 2023, you will become those who are age of 30 to 40, whereby you are in and you are in it for life already. So here is some explanation of why, why is it mandatory that uh, casual life is being made of such. Okay. One main reason why it's being made mandatory for those that are turning 30 uh, moving forward, right? It's because it's a universal coverage. And, and it does it does allow pre-existing disability to be covered and to be included. Right. So as such, the government will actually provide very strong premium support. So that the coverage will not be lost and the coverage is sustainable throughout your entire lifetime. As for your existing cause, why is it not mandatory or why is it not universal? Um, one of the key reasons is because of premiums. Like for example, in this year you are age of 50 and above, the premiums will not be that cheap and you might have already been paying for your elder shield for a good, good percentage of your age already. So it might, so for you to really consider shifting from elder shield to cash flow life, may be a consideration which you want to take. And there are also a higher proportion of civilian disability. So premiums will then cause increase significantly for everybody. Right. So if you are disabled, what happens? Okay. Cash flow life will then pay you pay out for life. Right. So how does the payout works? Okay. Cash Life always starts a payout from $600 per month, all right? Every year, it will increase by 2%. So like, for example, in this table, this year, 2020, you started your account board. So your monthly payout is $600. Next year, you will be increased to $600, and so on and so forth. So long as there's no claims being made, the monthly payout will continue to increase. Once a claim is being made, the increment will stop, and we will base on that last increment and we will pay from that amount for your entire life. All right. And of course, once a claim is made, you will, be, you will not be required to pay any further premium. Also. So that's a simple illustration. Potential payout increase until age 67 upon claim. So what happens is that in cash your life, say in 2020, 20, 20, you started to come on board and you started at $600. When you make a claim in 2022, you'll be paid 624 
for the duration of your service discipline directly. And assuming that you never make any claims, every year is increased based on 2%. If you are on board in this year at age of 30, when you're age of 67 or older from year 2057, if you're to make a claim, you're easily getting at least 1,002 per month payout for life. That's why it's your severe disability. So lastly, uh, in the illustration, so potential payouts continue to increase upon recovery and premium payment will re resume until age 67 or upon another claim. Okay, so what it means is that, right, if you were to make a claim before age of 67 and you actually recover from your severe disability, because, I mean, you can be wheelchair bounded, you, you may be having problem transferring yourself from your bed to the chair and you might be not able to move from one, um, move from one place to another. As, as, and as such, you are classified severe disabled, the plan will kick in claims will be paid out. But if you so if you so do recover, we will stop paying and everything will resume. So it's as if um, it's as if you did not receive any um, payout previously. So you will still need to pay your premium because you have recovered already, but your payout will also be increased over the years. So as long as you're not making any claim, your payout will be increased over time. But when you make a claim, you will get the final final amount as per the last increment in terms of payout, right? So this is this is what this slide is trying to explain. And of course, to ensure sustainability, premiums will be regularly adjusted. So um, for the first five years, premiums have been committed to a 2% increase per year. But um, after, then they will do a review based on the total claim demo, and then they will adjust premiums for the year again. Okay. So over here, um, it's, it talks about the longer premium payment duration from age of 30 to 67. So by, by increasing increasing the premium duration, we are actually lowering the annual premium. Right. So this will allow this will allow the plan to be a lot more sustainable as, as we are stretching, we are stretching it, but we are paying lesser every year. And as such, for those who join at age 59 or later, right? It will be they'll be imposed on the 10 year premium payment term. Instead of paying to age of 67 and stop, but they will pay for at least 10 years. This is to ensure that your annual premiums are sustainable. Right? Like we always like we keep saying, premiums for many show for casual life is fully payable by many state. And there's no there's no limit on your withdrawal. So government will, of course, provide premium subsidies and support. So what are they providing? Based on means testing, they will provide subsidies up to 30% to help the low and middle income. And there will still be an additional premium support for those who are unable to pay premium even after all the all the these subsidies and everything has come in. There will be a transitional subsidy of up to $250 across for the first five years for all Singaporeans. And participation incentives will be spread equally over 10 years, so as you come on board. So how does this work? Basically, there'll be a total of 500 to 2005 for Singapore citizens, and that's an additional 1,005 for the Medica and Pioneer Generation seniors. So all these are, are premium facilities that you can enjoy, all right, to offset your premiums or cash line. So let's give an example. Say for, for 30 year old this year, your net premium payable is only $74. So what happens is that your premium is at $206. There's a total of $250 of transitional subsidies. So from here, for this year, you have there's a the subsidy is actually at $70. And there's a 30% premium subsidy, which is of $62 for this year. So with that, after you net off everything, you are looking at a net premium of only $74. So over here, it talks about if you are you are currently on elder shoe and you move over to casual life, what happens is that right, you will only be paying either a base premium or a base premium plus a catch up component, depending on which of the scheme you are on. So if you're on elder shoe 400, you'll only be paying a base premium. So it'd be as per 
as per the current measure line premium. But if you're on Elder Shield 300, there's actually a matchup component whereby it'll be additional premiums that you'll be paying for a fixed period of 10 years. This is to, to make up the difference between the payout of 300 and 600. Right? And similarly, for if you're not an Elder Shield, but you want to use a card board to catch your life, there will also be a catch up component that is imposed because of your issue. So, this is an example of uh, how the catch up component actually works. So, if you look at the figures itself, even, even though we talk about having a catch up premium and stuff, but the net increase is in fact pretty marginal. Let's take an example. Um, Benacqua 54, it's, she's on Elder Shield 400. So she moved on to catch your life. The net premium payable is 324 per year because there's a participation incentive and there's a 30% subsidy. But for her, as she's on LDC 400, there is no catch up component. Whereas for Miss Lee, who is sitting on 54, but she's on LDC 300, there is a catch up component that's required to top up and there's approximately about $49 per year. So the, that's the difference in the net premium payable between Ms. Lee and Madam Kwa here, right? Okay, so pay one is different. So for you to check whether how much you're paying for your premiums, what you can do is that you can log on to cashyourlife.gov.sg and from here you'll be able to directly log in using your SIM pass and to see how much you need to, need to pay. Whereas for those who are born between 1946 to 1979, um, you are only able to charge the estimated premium because um, the scheme have not really fully started for you yet. Instead, you will only be uh, from 2021 20, onwards. That's where you can come on board to cash your life. Right? So you can use this premium calculator from this link here. Okay. Those who are born before 1946, uh, unfortunately, you need to call the hotline of 1-800-222-3399. This is a new job health hotline. So you can call this online to find out how much is your premiums payable if you do come on board to get your life. All right, um, now let's talk a little bit on the case process. So this process will be simplified and improved. How are we going to do it? When the claim is to be admitted, right, you just need to inform AIC, the hospital, or any long-term care provider, like a nursing home or community hospital. They will be there to assist you with the entire claim process. So, we just need to go for a disability assessment by one of the, our panel. And once the assessor has assessed you already, that report itself will be used as a basis for your claims directly. Right. So moving forward, um, Elder Shield will also be admitted by the government as per casual life. So and all this will be run on a not-for-profit basis. So we'll, they will not be looking at that much of uh, net returns to shareholders or whoever not um, as of if you would be run by a private insurer. All right. So the CPF board is actually the one that is doing the policy servicing and agency for integrated care or short AIC will be the one that is administering the claim. All right, supplements. Okay. Some of you may feel that um, $600 per month is insufficient, which actually is insufficient because earlier, before we start, we were talking about at least about two to $3,000 per month that you require for long-term care, correct? So, um, we also acknowledge that there's, there's this gap, but unfortunately, we are not able to impose such a high coverage on that for all Singaporeans. As such, instead of having, having a casual life payout of $3,000 per month, with high premiums for everybody, we kept it at 600, but we allow we allow all individuals to purchase additional supplement plan by private insurers for additional coverage. And not only that, the insurers, all the products that insurers would, would to launch, right? They will need to go through review with Ministry of Health, and the products have to be, excuse me, fully approved. So as such, the premiums that you can use to pay for the additional supplement products by private insurance such as uh, Aviva, Greystone, or NQC, you are able to use up to $600 per year per individual. $600 is an additional, additional amount that can be used in your premium medicine on top of all the other premium payments. Right? 
Okay. So here we is more on the additional premium support. So if, one thing to note is that for those that is on additional premium support, if you were to purchase a private insurer plan and enable to use uh, your Medisafe to pay for the premium, you will not be given the additional premium support benefit. All right. So uh, the main thing to note is the last point whereby EPS will be seized if policyholder purchase a supplement or integrated plan. So very quickly, let's look into what are the other new initiatives and schemes. Medisafe Care. Medisafe Care actually allows you to start to withdraw cash and use for any care arrangement for long term care. So depending on your Medisafe balance, this is the amount that you are able to withdraw. Right. So this is this is an additional additional um, additional scheme that, that actually allows us for touch withdrawal. So this is an example. Home care giving grant is used to offset costs for long-term caregiving in the community. This grant needs to be applied so that it actually gives a $200 per month benefit for lower and middle income. So means testing, means testing will be, be applied on it. And, and if once approved, then the $200 will be paid out to you. Other fund is made available for those in financial need. So other fund is really for those who are who are really financially in need and they're not able to to go in to move into um, any of the, the premiums or even after paying for everything, there is still a very huge shortage of the, the nursing care bills and all. So with that, you can actually apply for this other fund and it pays up to 250 per month. All right. So this is a lifetime payout. And it actually taps on our our government government finance. Right? So if if after all this casual life, elder shoe, elder fund, medicine, and you're still not able to to cover your needs, right? Your basic requirement, there is always an additional medi fund, or we can look to comcare. But uh, do know that for medi fund and comcare, you really need to move into a very low income uh, range, and means you have already wiped out all your medicine of your family members and, and yourself before you tap onto such, such funds. Okay. Okay. Now quickly, we'll just move into some of the frequently asked questions. Okay. I will be asking, um, how is cash life different from other private disability insurance products? Okay. To give you a quick rundown, there are a total of four different types of products now that we're looking to. Disability income, total permanent disability insurance, Critical illness and catch your life. Disability income provides you with your last drawn income if you are disabled. That means disabled meaning you are unable to work. So I'll provide you with a lifetime income. For a total permanent disability, this is a lump, 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 lump sum payout that will be paid to you once you're total and permanent disabled. The definition for total and permanent disabled is basically the loss of two limbs and above or in a coma state. The third one, when we talk about critical illness, is of course very illness targeted, and it is also to provide a lump sum payout. Whereas for cash flow life, it provides a monthly payout for long term care needs. And this is also whereby in cash flow life, we look into activities of daily living. Remember the six activities, any three you can you can fulfill, you will start the payout. Whereas for the earlier, earlier three, or disability income, you have to be fully disabled and you're not able to work, then we will pay you. For permanent disability, you need to lose two limbs and then we'll pay you. For critical illness, you have to fulfill the illness criteria and then we'll pay you another one. So that is the key differences between the, these four insurance products. All right. So that's what I just went through. Okay. You may ask, how do you join Casual Life? This is a reiteration, so I will not repeat one more time. Okay. I need to pay any premiums if I'm severely disabled I'm in, and I'm in the Okay. We will still need to contribute a one year annual premium payment if you are severely disabled and you are in the future cohort. All right. That means, um, say you are severely disabled at the age of 20. Right. So, on if when you hit the age of 30, you'll be automatically enrolled into casual life. But because you are already severely disabled, we will start to pay out. 
pay bill. But earlier we also talked about saying that the premiums will be waived if we start to pay you, right? But in this case, what it says is that you will have to contribute at least a one year premium payment while you are getting your yeah. Then from then on, you do not need to make any further premium payment already, right? What will happen to Elder Shoe? So those who are not surveyed disabled and choose to join Casual Life will, will be premiums paid under Elder Shoe will be taken into account when you're calculating your Casual Life premiums. And then the Casual Life premium will be replaced the Elder Shoe premium. So it's basically a replacement. If you choose not to join Casual Life, no problem. Elder Shoe will still continue to provide the same benefit as your existing. And moving forward next year, our government will take over the administration of Elder Shoe. What happened to eldership supplement policy holders? Okay. For those who have already purchased additional plans to enhance their long-term care from the private insurer like Aviva, Greystone, or NTUC, everything will continue, nothing will change. So it's just that like this. There will not be any changes to the plans. All right. So not, need not be worried. Even if you were to transfer from eldership to catch your life, all these supplement plans, everything will still continue and will still be covered for your entire life as long as premiums are being paid. Okay. So how do you check if you have other shoe or supplementary cover? Okay, the easiest way is really to go to CPF board, put log on to cpf.gov.sg, go to your online services, under messages, you look under your healthcare session. There will be a two-liner that indicates um, if you have other shoe and if you do, which company are you under, All right? So if you're still not sure, you probably you will then have to call the individual companies to check. Us. All right. Okay, for Cashew Life premiums, uh, log on to cashewlife.com.sg and from there you'll be able to determine the premiums. So, okay, assessment for claims. Okay, because we are making things simpler, so in terms of assessment, you can you only need to do one assessment, but you need to submit two claim forms one for Cashew Life and one for a supplementary plan. All right. But the same assessment from the assessor can be used to submit for both sides. So you just need to duplicate the same report. That will do. You don't have to be assessed twice. We will, uh, both of them, both cash flow life government and supplement, the uh, insurers will accept the same assessment. That done. Okay. okay, that's all I have. I know it's a bit more full, but um, I hope that it does it does help to give you a little bit of insights about cash flow life. And if there's any questions, well, we can always um, log on to the website or call the healthcare hotline or you can also reach out to us directly. Okay, so okay, I'll, I'll skip this session. This session is more on the participation. All right, with that, I'm done with my presentation and I'll like to call. Oh, you want to continue? Okay. Thanks. Uh, all right, um, thank you, Mr. Randy, for sharing. Uh, we will now be moving on to the Q&A segment of today's presentation. If you haven't already, please send in all questions by filling up the form in the chat box. Uh, we appreciate all the questions that we that were sent today, and we'll try to rectify all queries if time allows us. Uh, without further ado, uh, this is our first question. So it's from uh, Ms. Trina Leng. Hi, my mother is PR50 this year. Will she also be on Casio Life? Will the monthly payout from cash yield and additional coverage affect the level of subsidies that nursing homes provide, uh, Randy? Okay, so um, for cash yield life, right, for those age, like I mentioned earlier, for your mom, right, at age of 50, uh, she can opt to enroll into cash yield life next year, all right? So for now, uh, there is no, there's no option to come on board. You need to wait till 2021. She will not be automatically enrolled, but you can actually help to enroll her next year when, when it's made available. All right. So um, will the money payout from cash yield and additional coverage affect the level of subsidies that nursing home provide? Uh, no, it will not. Okay. The subsidies from nursing home, right, when they provide you the subsidy, they look at two things. Firstly, your housing, your annual valuation of house, and secondly, your average household income. So based on these two factors, they will determine how much the subsidy can be done. So any, any payout that is made by Cash Your Life or any of the additional insurance products, right, or your insurance plans, all these are direct payout to you. This will not be uh, made known to, 
to the nursing home or to the hospitals for any sort of and I hope I answer your question on this. Um, because we don't have a very large group today, this afternoon. So if you want to, you can feel free to unmute yourself and just, um, we can just um, share directly. Yeah. Anyone else? Or if any of you is interested to find out what what does the supplement plans that is available in the market, which one is better to go for and all. Is anybody keen on that? Well. <laughs> okay, all right, thanks. That's great. Okay, just to share very share very quickly. Um in Singapore, right? Um like I mentioned earlier, the government actually allowed us to utilize up to $600 of our Medicaid to purchase an additional supplement product. Okay. But to take note, right, this $600 uh, is to use to pay for annual premium and it can be used once a year. So if, if those who are, for those who are on elder shoe and back then you actually purchase a supplement already, so this $600 will be used to pay for that. So even if you were to buy another one today, right, you will need to pay the additional balance, right? Okay. Currently now, there are three insurance companies that offer some plans. They are namely Aviva, Great Eastern, and NTUC Income. So for some of plans, right, um, one thing I would like you all to take note of is that in casual life or for elder shoe, right, um, you, in order for you to admit a claim, you need to be unable to do three out of six right so that is where that is then they only pay out but for supplement plans right there is an option to choose for two out of six so out of the six daily activities leave, uh, leave daily activities right if you cannot do two the additional supplementary plans can immediately start the money payout rate so just to give you a gauge typically for age of 40 if you're 40 years old this year um, with a $600 of premium, you'll be able to add on between $800 to $1,001 of benefits per month. All right. So, and, and the premiums can be, will be level. That means the premiums will retain the same for the rest of your life. And the benefit also will be the same across. So there's no escalation of 2%, uh, not like cash or life. So you have very high assurance that it, the amount of money that you're paying every year would not exceed six hundred dollars. That can be deducted from your medicine. So, if you are keen, uh, you all can feel free to to leave down, leave down contact during the feedback session, and then we will reach out to you again to further illustrate more in details. Right, but there is a reason why the government allows us to use six hundred dollars of medicine. So if you if you do can do look into it and and get it done, the they are allowing the $600 usage is because they understand that there is really a need to get coverage for this, but you don't need to overcover yourself. So don't need to overpay, but you can do, but you can choose to enhance, enhance the premium payments, right? Okay, uh, I think I saw a question from Shane, right? So if, you're, if my mom has pre-existing condition like heart rate pressure, can she go on board this? Okay. If depending on how how high is the high blood pressure, of course, as long as you're not severely disabled, cash your life will definitely accept you. So you just need to go ahead and apply. So what it means by severely disabled means right, you you are not you have not fulfilled the three out of six activities of daily living yet. Okay. So one thing to know is that right for plans like cash your life or even the supplementary plans, right? We are not targeting so much on your, your illnesses condition, but instead we are looking at your current disability state as opposed to your future potential. Okay. So a direct, a, direct, uh, a direct answer to your question, question is that for pre-existing condition, we will still assess, we will still underwrite, but the chances of you getting covered is much higher of, um, through this through this kind of casual life plans as compared to normal insurance products, right? Yeah, I hope I answer your question. Um, maybe just to highlight again, for casual life, as long as you're not severely disabled, you are able to go on board the, the plan itself, okay? Yeah. So 
if you uh, if you guys are really keen, can go on to Cash Your Life website and key in your parents. Um, I see that most of you are asking about parents. <laughs> so you can key in your parents' uh, details, like day of birth and stuff, and get an estimated premium from there. So at least you have an idea of how much how much you are looking at um, deducting from their many savings accounts moving forward. Um, yes, any, any more questions? <laughs> okay, um, if not, we can move forward, Carl. All right, thank you everyone for, for attending today's webinar. Please fill out the feedback form in the chat box below. Uh, so we will know which areas we can improve on. Thank you and have a nice weekend. I'll be posting the, the, the feedback form right now. All right. Thank you so much for listening in this afternoon. I hope I didn't bore everyone that much. Um, but this is, a, this is a national scheme and it's pretty important that we all understand roughly what is it all about because it affects almost every Singaporean as well PR. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help that it's a mandatory scheme where we cannot opt out of. But um, I, I hope it helps. And if really you have any, any further questions also, uh, do leave your contact details in the feedback form and we will reach out to you and then probably we can have a more personal, personal in-depth discussion. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks everyone for attending today. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Please fill up the, the form in the chat below.